Hey YouTube, back with another weekend LEGO Star Wars set review. Might do other themes in the future, but uh, we're doing Star Wars for now. This is the Imperial Armored Marauder. Eight plus is the age range. Set number 75311. Has 478 pieces, so that's under 10 cents per piece at the retail price of $40. This is retiring soon, and I got it on Amazon right after Christmas for 30 bucks, and I definitely liked that price for this set. I really wanted this set when it came out, but I just thought $40 was a ridiculous price. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting for it to go on sale. I never saw it on sale. I might have seen it for $32 at one point, but it was down to like $28 on Amazon around Christmas, right after Christmas. So that's when I got it. Uh, I thought it was really cool. I really love the Stormtroopers. I like collecting these Stormtroopers. I've got like, I think 40 of them now. And so adding this guy, this was my really big draw to the set, was the Artillery Stormtrooper. Those yellow markings are really cool. You could possibly, you know, take that backpack off and make him like a commander or something for the stormtroopers. Uh, the yellow pauldron also, you can use it for your clone troopers. Um, really cool. You know, the pauldrons, those cloth pieces are kind of going out now. They're just printing them on. So it's really nice to get this. Um, yeah, um, really cool set. The box is um, pretty nice. You know, you've got that, I forget what planet that is, where they go in like the first season of Mandalorian. Oh uh, yeah, that's this. That's the box. The instruction manual is pretty nice. Uh, it's small, you know, at least they have printing on it compared to the new ones. Um, you know, there's there's a bit of pages. It's, it's a bigger set, um, piece count wise. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts, initial thoughts on the set. Let's get on to the figures. So starting off here with the minifigures first is the artillery stormtrooper. Really great figure, identical to the other stormtroopers except for the cloth pauldron on the uh, shoulder, as well as the yellow markings on the legs, torso, and helmet. Uh, this is a really great figure, uh, really cool. I really love the yellow, it really pops. Even with the white, uh, it's just a very bright colored trooper, um, pretty accurate to the scene in the second season of Mandalorian, uh, really cool. Uh, he has a little brick built backpack, two white lightsaber hilts there on some one by one clips as well as one of those, um, you know, accessory attachment for minifigures It's in clear. A really cool figure um, you guys, as well. You got some yellow markings on the back and I'll show you that with the uh, backpack off now. So here he is with his helmet off, is in his backpack off as well. You can see he's got a similar to angry clone face just without as much angry. <laughs> and uh, you can see there on the back, he's got uh, like those four packs up on the back part of his uh, upper back, and then that yellow print down below. Uh, really great figure, looks really good. Um, definitely a fantastic minifigure, I really like him a lot. Uh, let's get on to the other Stormtroopers now. All right, here are your other two Stormtroopers, identical in every way except underneath their helmets. They have different faces as well as different skin tones, which is really nice to see. The diversity in the Lego minifigures, um, yeah, definitely works really well. Uh, they've got medium blasters right there, you can see, look really nice. Uh, I really love these family guy stormtroopers, they call them. Uh, I really think they look really good. Um, of course, you can't turn the helmets because of that uh, lip down there that covers the upper part of the torso, but I don't really mind because they're just stormtroopers. And I'll show you now with them without their helmets. All right, so you can see them there without their helmets. You've got a, uh, we'll say, a Caucasian female, and there's a um, you know, black male, pretty cool to have the different uh, skin tones in LEGO Star Wars minifigures, as well as uh, different um, male and female characters, really cool. And uh, there they are, I really like the helmets again, dual molding, looks really nice. Uh, let's get on finally to Grief Karga. All right, so here's Grief Karga, looks really cool, I really like that hair piece, I think it's the same one they use for Finn. Um, he's got a medium, well, a small blaster pistol. Uh, but his torso details are fantastic. Looks really great. It carries all the way through the hips as well as the legs. You can see there, it looks really great. The dark brown, the dark red, the black, the kind of gold slash just nougat or dark tan color all looks really good on him. And you can see he's got a little bit of back printing, but nothing fantastic, um, but a really great figure. And I'll show you his alternative face now. Finally, here are all the accessories you get. You get that artillery piece for the artillery stormtrooper. It's kind of like a mortar launcher thing, uh, really cool. As well as you get these two printed crates. These are the smaller kinds of crates. They've got Imperial logos 
on one side, and then on the other side, they've got Arabesh, which is the Star Wars language, and just some like little clips um, for clipping on the lids in imaginative play. Uh, really cool, uh, you know, accessories, and um, that's about all you get with the minifigures and accessories. So now let's get on to the set. All right, so here it is, just a quick profile view of the set. Uh, looks really good uh, from most angles. Lots of a uh, good mixture of slopes and tiled surfaces and studded surfaces, um, but it does kind of look like a hodgepodge of stuff, which I think does make sense, seeing as this is post um, Death Star 2 Empire and the Empire is kind of fractured. So a lot of their ships would be kind of in uh, disrepair and kind of be, you know, hodgepodge of uh, old and new parts as they try to scrounge around <laughs> to keep the Empire afloat uh, as it's, uh, you know, dividing and different moths are taking over uh, different sectors of the galaxy. Uh, but yeah, here's the profile view. Um, let's start off here at the back and uh, you can lift this down just like this. And inside you'll see one seat there uh, for a gunner and you can rotate it just like this, either at the top or from inside. That's got a clear um, kind of a half cylinder piece that reaches up to the top so that this all rotates together. Uh, really cool. And then there's tiles up here so that this top part doesn't get stuck. Uh, speaking of stuck, there is a little piece right here you can see, and that is a stopper so that this turret can only go uh, a certain range of motion. And, um, you know, you wouldn't want it flying around to the front and shooting stuff that, uh, there's a, a gunner watchman spot at the top and you wouldn't want this gun swinging around and shooting him by accident. So it shoots to the back. Uh, this is really cool. I really like how you can see through. Um, and I'll show you later the uh, figures all loaded up, but you can see the trooper through, um, both these angled, on the side and as well directly on there. Uh, you've got three blue studs on each side kind of representing the thrusters of the ship. I don't know if the ship would really have thrusters like that. These ships tend to just be like levitating ships, but um, you know, it's probably accurate to the scene. Uh, I'm not saying the scene's accurate, but uh, yeah. So moving on to the side here, each side is identical pretty much. There might be a little bit of variation. I'm not 100% sure, but so you can lift these up right here. These are some older kind of uh, truck truck bed side pieces. So what you can do is you can just slide in these crates. You get two, you get two sides. So you can just slide that in. It's on a tiled surface. You just push that in there, ready to go. Uh, if you want to store everything on the ship, I like to uh, throw some of the Stormtrooper blasters in on each side as well. So you can just fold that back down. You're ready to go. Uh, moving ahead here, uh, you've got this rotating cannon, very similar to like a World War I tank. Uh, it reminds me of the scene from The Last Crusade of Indiana Jones, where, uh, you know, he's Indy's hanging off the side thing right here, and they try to scrape him off onto the, the rocks. Uh, that's very similar. In fact, let's show, do that now. So here's that World War One tank look that I'm referencing in The Last Crusade, where this tank is flying along with the Nazis on top and the, uh, you know, just the local militia and... Uh, and he's hanging off the side and they're trying to scrape him off. So, you know, he's kind of hanging on the gun there. It's just like that. It's a very similar look to uh, that ship. This is kind of like a World War I tank, but just, you know, Star Wars version. So moving up again, you got here your uh, main door. Now this door isn't tall enough for a minifigure to fit through standing up, but it does fold up on the top and down below, which is a really nice thing. And uh, so you can, in theory, have your stormtrooper just kind of like walk up here, he would have to duck under, but uh, and he can't stand up inside there, but you can throw him in and you can uh, maneuver this around here, let's see, and you can close him up and he's ready to go. Uh, so that's the door that's identical on the other side. Uh, you've got stud shooters up at the front here, and now that we're at the front here, we can show you where the pilot would go. So you can fold this down. You can see right there, there's a nice printed console, which is cool. Another tan chair, which is nice. And this top opens up as well. It just stops right there. You can hear the noise. So that's really nice. You don't have to like adjust it in any weird way because it kind of looks like it would just like go through um, both ways, but it actually stops where it needs to stop. So it looks really smooth. Uh, there's definitely a lot of space in there for the pilot. Um, again, you can see it's him through uh, these kind of open slotted windows, which is really cool. And um, yeah, that's the... Uh, that's everything around the ship. Here's the um, identical other side, nothing going on different there. 
maybe a few different pieces, but uh, yeah. Now let's get a top view. All right, so here's the top of the set. Uh, you've got a little hatch here that opens up. It'd be cool, you know, if you got a figure move from the bottom up to the top, but you can't do it like that. So you basically just have to stand a guy up here and we'll put grief cargo up here because that's what it looks like on the box. Uh, but you can have your kind of watch guy, uh, watchman up top, looking out the hat, top hatch for uh, incoming rebels or, uh, you know, any opposing threat to the Empire. Uh, there's the swivel cannon on the back, stud shooters. I didn't mention that, but there you go. Um, moving back farther from that hatch, you've got another hatch, which is a different kind of hatch. It's really just for human access. So now you can see lifting this hatch up right here. You can kind of put your thumb right here on this cheese slope and you can lift it up there and you can see there's two more seats. One, a uh, regular kind of seat piece. Another one is just a studded, half studded, half tiled plate. And uh, you can fit both of your figures on that. Now I think the back one here has some more space behind the figure. So that's where I like to put the um, artillery trooper because he's a backpack. So he looks really good in the back there and you can put the regular stormtrooper up front. In fact, with the backpack, he's not even gonna fit in the regular chair. Uh, so now I'll show you the set with the figures all loaded up. So here you go, the top view with the artillery stormtrooper and the regular stormtrooper loaded up in the uh, main troop bay area. And uh, it's a pretty tight fit and it's really hard to get your fingers in if you're an adult, like fitting your fingers down there, really tough. Uh, you have to definitely take your time and do it right. And now I'll show you the rest of the figures. All right, so here's the rest of the guys. You got Grief Karga up there in the front, you know, kind of being the pilot. You can see his gun on the floor right there, lots of space. Um, and you just close him up like this. And there you go. You can see him kind of through the top, not very well, but uh, maybe that side view. You can see the top of his head right there through the side window. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I like to put the mortar firing launcher artillery thing right there on the uh, main uh, entry area, but you can just close this up like this and you're ready to go there. Uh, moving around to the back here now. You've got your stormtrooper right there who is the gunner. And what you can do is fold this up here. You can see him right through there. I really like that. And you can actually kind of have him looking out whatever angle you want, uh, which re looks really cool for play purposes. Uh, finally here, let's just look at the bottom of the set. Uh, there's the bottom. It's just got a bunch of those uh, inverted circular tiles and uh, not too much going on there, which is nice. And it looks pretty clean from the bottom. You got some dark tan throughout, looks good. I really like these slopes that kind of add up here. And in fact, you just build these two things on the side. They're just like big sub assemblies and you just kind of clip them on. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go on to the final thoughts. All right, so my final thoughts on this set. I think it's a really good set. I think $40 uh, seems really good with that almost 500 piece count. That's well over, well under 10 cents per piece. But I just think the, old, the whole set uh, just the whole presence of it does not feel like $40, at least for me, growing up in the early 2000s, getting Legos, $40 got you a lot more, uh, $30 got you a lot more, and uh, this is mostly a piece count inflated by a lot of really tiny pieces, like, you know, these one-by-one, -one, you know, studs on the back, um, but this definitely has a lot of density, it's a thick, heavy set, uh, so that does give it some benefits, um, you know, it's a really good set. Overall, it looks really cool. Uh, especially, I really, really, really love this um, artillery stormtrooper. It looks really good with all the other stormtroopers. Gives you some more diversity. You know, if you got those stormtrooper battle packs from, I think, three, year, three or four years ago now, uh, the one I just reviewed recently, uh, this definitely makes your Imperial Army look a lot better. Uh, really cool figure. Um, I think this was on sale around Christmas time, Christmas of 2022, for $30 or at least right after Christmas, and that's when I got it. I saw the $40 price when it came out in 2021. I was like, no way, I'm not paying that kind of price for this set, uh, but $30, I was like, you know what, uh, it's gonna retire soon anyways, so I'll pick it up for 30 bucks. Definitely a lot more worth it for 30. Um, yeah, really cool set. Uh, would definitely recommend getting it. I think it's back up to full price, and I'm pretty sure it's retiring soon, so you're gonna wanna get it um, before it retires if you want this set. You know, it works as a Mandalorian set, it works as an Imperial set. I think the Imperial version is more light bluish gray than dark. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is the uh, Armored Marauder set. Uh, really cool, and I'll see you in the next review. Bye.